Hey, yo, 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 we back. Wax Chronicles. Where's the poster at? Where's the fucking poster I'm actually, at? I'm actually prepared this week. Where the fuck? Noise. Um, shouts out to C Muscle getting mad active in the comments. I don't know if you yeah, saw that's that. that's a comment of the year right there. Oh, my Either God. One. Yeah. Obviously, shouts out to S Ambush, priority number one. Uh, but priority number two, C Muscle. Bringing the heat, probably our probably our best fan, probably our I, well, one fan. Absolutely, uh, and that was some insightful stuff that he said. He like oh, actually yeah. was like a thoughtful response. I would agree, man. He actually he actually made me uh, walk a couple things back in my head. So I'll never backtrack. So <laughs> too much of a stubborn um, fuck. But no, there were there were some good uh, some good insights from C Muscle out there. So. Oh, we we appreciate that, and it goes double for any other fuckers that are listening. How about you get active? Yeah, let's get active. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's been kind of a down week, I guess, when it comes to NBA news. Um, conference finals concluded in kind of the way everyone expected. I don't know. Did you want to talk at all? Did we cover Game Seven at all? No. Prior? Uh, did you want to talk about that at all, Jimmy Butler? Any Celtics Heat stuff? Uh, yeah, I mean, what did you think? Um, I mean, it kind of sucks. It was like riding on the wall, but it it was – that comeback blew my mind. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that in basketball. The Heat comeback? Yeah, I mean, that it wasn't was – wasn't that crazy, was it? It, was like, it felt like 15 points in two minutes is what it felt like. I don't know what it actually ended up being, but um, the way the Celtics almost choked that game away was – I mean, that would have had to have been one of the worst choke jobs in NBA history, I feel like. So, um, but it was, I don't know, it was kind of cool. It came down to that shot, Jimmy Butler. What did you, you think know. about that shot selection? I got no no issue with it whatsoever. Yeah, me either. Um, me it'd, either. Be it'd be different if he was, you know, Marcus Smart, like fourth best player on the team type situation or whatever. Um, because, you know, spoiler alert, Marcus Smart was shooting the Celtics out of that game. He was one of the big reasons for that monumental collapse towards the end of game seven, but um, a bunch of three balls. Yeah. He was just like stupid pull. He was just trying to go for like a fuck you three and he just kept missing. It's like, okay, you get one maybe. Yeah. Right. Uh, and he ended up taking like three. So that was kind of a disaster. <laughs> um, but no, I, I got no issue with the Jimmy Butler shot. Um, whatsoever. Um, what did you, did you see the, like the stress Max Struess play where, the controversial call where they called back that three pointer like six or seven possessions later kind of swung yeah. momentum a little bit. What do you think of that? I mean, I ain't that bothered by it. That happens in games all the time where there's like a, a toe on the line and they end up changing the points and like yeah, I know there's a bunch of people whining because it was like it's inconclusive. You can't. It's like to me, it looked like he fucking stepped out. Like I, I guess that's where the to play devil's advocate. That's where the issue lies. I feel like that because it's like. Okay, you ruled it a three, then you took it back with no real like official review. But like it's one of those Am things. Am I like, wrong? If, all the, those three pointers get reviewed all the time after the fact as the game keeps going. Yeah, that's that's fair, but like I guess maybe it's just different because of the situation. Maybe we're just applying a different standard and we shouldn't be, and maybe you're in the right on that. But I feel like once you once you call it a three. To just pull it back when it is inconclusive, because like I've seen some angles of that that his foot was hovering over the line. I mean, he wasn't. He Let's wasn't real. on wood. Boston deserved to win that series, so I ain't too mad at it. Yeah, I think For that it was game the, especially. Yeah, I think it was the correct outcome, but I think the Heat fans have a legitimate gripe. I mean, they can, they'll probably hold on to that one for years, and they have a reason to. But I think the Celtics were the best team and came out on top as they should have. But oh yeah, if they want to, they can have that game back if they get back those six finals. So the Mavericks throws bullshit D Wade free throws. True, so. true, very true. Yeah, and if they give back fucking, you know what, D Wade has a lot. He, he owes a lot of debts. Yeah, I was seriously. I've been. Uh, you know, people have been rehashing a lot of stupid talking points of like Steph Curry, LeBron, you know, rings counting and stuff. And like, it just blows my mind the amount of people that still think D Wade was in his prime in like 2013, 2014. It's like you were not watching basketball if that's your take. You were having I mean, the playoffs like 50, when he was all beat up and stuff. Yeah, he was averaging like 15 a game in the playoffs, shooting like shit. You could tell he had no explosiveness. No, I mean, there was nothing there. So, yeah. Um, 
So yeah, let's let's turn Heat Celtics game seven into a pro LeBron take. That's that's my goal. What else um, would it be? Mission accomplished. Every <laughs> take should be that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess that leads to the the finals being kind of what we expected. Um, I think we kind of gave loose predictions, assuming a Celtics win, right? You got Warriors. Yep. I got Warriors in five, maximum six. Whoa. Really? Know? Yeah, they're just better than everybody. I'd probably go Warriors in seven. On the home, on the home. You think floor. it's actually going to go seven? You think that you think that that Celtics team could, they can have those kind of droughts that they did at the end of Game Seven can stack with the Warriors? I keep, I just keep going back and forth in my mind on the Celtics team because it's like on one hand they've just they beat the Nets, they've run the gauntlet, you know, the Eastern Conference gauntlet in a way. Nets, Bucks, Heat. Bucks um, missing one of their best players. Tyler Hero missing yeah. second best player. Miss their or third best player missing. That's fair. Time. Celtics have had they've missed some, some time on their side too. So there's been some give and take there. But I, don't know, I, I guess impressed. I guess I am impressed just, by their two road win game sevens. Well, yeah, I think they're they have seven road wins in the playoffs, which is you know I don't I don't know. I mean that doesn't happen often. I feel like, right. but. Um, I don't know, man. I just – I have a really hard time. I feel like I could talk myself into any outcome. I just – I have no no real feel for it. Celtics so. in four, talk yourself into that one. Do it live on camera. You want me to? You can't talk yourself into that. It's horse shit. Uh, they're the best team ever equipped to defend uh, the Warriors. They're, they're far and away the, – they have, they have multiple lineups where they can switch all five. They have and the so you're saying You're saying Horford – Horford can guard Steph Curry, Robert Williams. I think he's Steph one of the best bigs you can have to switch out on perimeter. I don't think it's a perfect win, but I mean, think about it. If the Warriors go small, they could, you know, the Celtics can play Grant Williams. They can play small too. Both, you know, they can play big and they always keep uh, great defense on the court at all times. They're never sacrificing. Even Payne Pritchard, who's, I think he's like their eighth or ninth man towards the bottom of their playoff rotation. Yeah, he doesn't have the size, but sometimes defense isn't always about size. It's about effort, and he's, you know, I think he's, you know, gives the effort required on the defense. But I don't know. I mean, I guess – You heard it here first, viewers. Bailey's calling it Celtics and four. <laughs> Fuck you. Fucking no, I, I literally just called Warriors and seven, but I'm, I'm just – it's just a point to say that, like, Hello? Okay. I can hear you now. Okay. That's weird. My interesting. Sorry if the audio is janky. Um, I don't know what the fuck just happened, but no, I mean my my efficient pick is Warriors and Seven. But I would not be shocked. I guess I'd have a spine, you gutless coward. Um about the only outcome I wouldn't be able to truly make a case for as a sweep either way honest if we're being totally honest all jokes aside uh anybody can pick it in seven have a spine i mean they're two good teams i mean they're the two best around i'm just messing around i don't know if you had to like so are the warriors like heavy heavy favorites in your eyes you're just like if they lose i will be i would be very surprised i I picked them in five i literally think they're gonna win in five okay Okay. I mean, I wouldn't. I, I hope wouldn't I'm be surprised wrong. By that I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. I really wouldn't be surprised. I'm maybe wrong. The other thing is like, I don't know. I I could talk myself into a short series if the Warriors come out and stomp Game One, and the Celtics have had the rest, the little rest that they've had. I feel like they've been playing every other day for like fucking a long time now. It feels like, um, and I I think what the conference semis went seven games as well for them. Yeah, Bucks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm just, I, I will say, like, as much as I want to just like shit on both these teams and hate them both, I'm very excited for these basketball games. Still the NBA finals. Yeah. I I thought yeah. I'd be pretty mad about it, but like, I'm pretty hyped for tonight's game. So I mean, we're recording we can, this before game one. So I, you can look at all the, all the like ESPN articles you want, all the stuff, all the analytics, all the countdowns. It's like what it boils down to who's going to shoot better from three. Yeah, it's all modern, fucking matter. Yeah. It's stupid. Yeah, and my I, I I like the Warriors odds shooting better from three than Celtics. So that's fair. I mean, that is it's probably not the uh the analysis that like 
most people would lean to, but it's like, yeah, let's talk about if Jason, it's like, it does it really matter who's going to shoot better? From three? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you always have three of the best shooters in the league. Yeah. I think you're motherfucker, man. Why are you getting me all depressed like this? I was actually going to hype for tonight's game. And now you're just stroking the effing warriors off like this. Yeah, dude. Tell me how excited yeah. when, it's, when it's 70 to 46 at the beginning of the third quarter. I mean, I don't know if that's going to happen. I just am, and I could be wrong, but I just well, it'd be a it'd be a fitting end to the worst playoffs ever. Yeah, it's like let's just get four blowouts and get the fuck out of here and focus on the draft, please. Yeah, let's focus on on the Pacers with the highest pick they've had since like what eighty seven. Yeah. Um, well, that's a that's a decent segue. I'm more I mean, interested in that. We'll be talking. We'll be talking finals as it goes on and stuff. I'm sure. But unfortunately, do you want do you want to do a quick uh, pulse check on Pelicans Pacers? Kind of where things are at because I I heard some news today on the Pacers front. It well, didn't get to it. There ain't a lot of Pelicans shit going on, so it didn't it didn't grab headlines, and it probably wasn't even today. But um, there was basically a report that uh, I think Mark Stein um, mentioned that like it's very likely that Brogdon's gone. Ooh, it's very nice. very likely. Good. Um, I guess the Pacers top brass saw. Just in the small sample size, I don't. I don't even think Brogdon and Halliburton played over. They play together. Like, yeah. together. Yeah, they play like couple weeks together. Dude, it was it was such a market difference because, and not to just rehash stuff we've already covered, but post Sabo trade, Pacers injury problems. They were just playing young guys, and it was a ton of fun. Halliburton was getting out and running. It was the most fun I've had watching Pacers basketball in a while. The second Brogdon came back. It felt like, oh, we're just watching 2019 Pacers, 2020 Pacers. It was just like – and it just like – it took all the wind out of the, like so many players' sales. It just felt like – I don't know. I don't know. So that was some really good news on the Pacers front. Also, I've been – you know, this is the highest pick they've had in my entire lifetime. And I've really started to like dive deep on some of these prospects. So um, I don't know. It's kind of cool though because – you know, my early favorites were Math Matherin and Keegan Murray. And even after researching for quite a few hours, listening to different like podcasts about player profiles, watching highlight tapes, those are still my top two guys out of all the all the kind of that crop of wings we were talking about. But I've also worked myself into a shoot on AJ Griffin and um Johnny Davis. I would be very happy with either of those choices. So um feels like a win-win, but Somehow, some way. Well, yeah, what if a guy like Jaden Ivey slides too? Like, that'd be crazy. I wouldn't even be mad at that. I mean, and that's the thing, like, a lot of people talk about, like, oh, well, they can't do that. They already have Halliburton. It's like, what have we been doing over the last five to ten years in the NBA? Small perimeter players that can shoot and create their own shot? Yeah. Not a problem. Right. The more the merrier. So, mm -hmm. I, got, I got really no issue with that. Um, how, how have, I guess how have your – have you heard any like trade rumors or anything on the Pelicans front? Has it been pretty quiet? Pretty quiet, just a bunch of sensationalism over that bullshit. Like they're not going to guarantee Zion's contract, and it's like it doesn't even make sense. But like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just I guess we'll see what happens with Zion's extension. Um, yeah. But other than that, I haven't seen a lot of uh, concrete information on like this is who the Pelicans are like looking at. I've, I've heard a lot of stuff about Benedict Matherin, but. I'm not, I don't want to get my hopes up too much. He's like, commodity. Yeah, he's like the number one guy and wants selected by the Pelicans, but Johnny Davis would be cool. Or Again, I'm, I would just be repeating what I said last week, but I'm still feeling the same way. And, but mm -hmm. haven't heard much at all. Uh, I don't know, kind of tangential to the Pelicans. I don't know if you heard about the stuff with Lonzo. Did you hear about that? Yeah, right? that's freaking sucky, dude. Like now they're that concerned sounds... if he's going to be ready for the beginning of next season? Well, yeah, then it's like – it's one of those things too. It's like – just the way leg injuries, like the history of like knee and leg injuries in the NBA, it's like he's going to have those questions the rest of his career. You know? Yeah. And it's it sucks that a lot of those, um, you know, knee conditions and things, they – for every time there are like a one-off, oh, this guy just tore his ACL, recovered perfectly fine. It's like there's those other stories of like, well, then it was – beginning of you know a lot of leg injuries so fingers crossed i think we're both fans of lonzo hopefully that's not the case with him it sucks too because like he was coming into his own the bulls were building a really cool culture and it already feels like it's done before it started with levine stuff the lonzo stuff it's just like fuck man would have been oh, yeah. interesting to see yeah and uh also too i'm looking at lonzo's player card 
his five seasons in the league, he's played 52, 47, 63, 55, 35. So, yikes. Um, no matter what the Pelicans got back, they don't need it. I mean, I think Lonzo's a good, really good player, and I really like him, but that's just yeah. that's that's that is an injury that like that's significant enough for me to say he's injury prone. Yeah, yeah, until proven otherwise, basically. He's only played to... one season over 55 oh. games. Yeah, that's and I mean that's and that was 63. That's the sucky part is usually we see those trends later on in players' careers. It's like, oh, he was like an Iron Man for his first four or five years. It's like, no, he came out the gate injury prone. So yeah. I don't know. It sucks, man. I, I'm I'm a big fan of Lonzo's. Dude, so last year I didn't realize this. What the um that's crazy. What the he shot he shot shut the fuck up. He <laughs> shot four twenty three from the field and four twenty three from three. Identical. Dang. That's kind of funny. Next level. Next level. Dang. Yeah, gotta give him a shout out for his three point shooting though, dude. He went from three oh five to three twenty nine to three seventy five to three seventy eight to four twenty three. Jesus. Thank you, Fred. Dude, and he went when he went from LA to New Orleans, he went from 329 to 375 AK. It's the same thing everybody talks about, but Fred's Fred Vincent literally is the shooting. Oh player. yeah. Listening I to they J never lose him. Yeah, listening to the way JJ Reddick's talked about him over the years on the old man in the three podcast. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. What a treat. What a what a asset to have right there. Oh, you just oh, yeah, inst baby. instant like 30 to 50 percent boost to every three-point shooter <laughs> yeah it feels like a 2k game if you hire him he improves your <laughs> right yeah you got the a plus uh shooting coach outside shooting coach yeah yeah fucking a lucky yeah baby you dirty dog um there's a couple other minor minor headline type stuff i don't know if you want to cover it but uh the quinn snyder situation it seems like it's reaching a i don't know it seems like we should hear something sooner rather than later on that front. Um, and I know we've already talked about the Jazz multiple times, but uh, if you're a Jazz fan, put yourself in their shoes. How do you feel about Quinn Snyder? Would you want him? Would you want him gone? I think it's ready for them to tear it down. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. I mean, I would I mean, like, personally, I would like Quinn Snyder to be the one at the head of that because I don't know how much better you're going to do mm -hmm. with, like, the coaching pool that's available, but it's like something's got to give there. I, yeah, I mean, if you have to pick between Gobert, Donovan Mitchell, Quinn Snyder as your building block to pair with Ainge, it's like, who do you pick, you know? Yeah, I just don't know because it's like, I feel like if you get rid of Gobert, it's not like a Donovan Mitchell and whatever you get in return for Gobert is going to do it. Yeah. Likewise, if you trade Donovan Mitchell, Gobert and whatever you get for Donovan Mitchell isn't going to do it. So it's like, I don't know, dude. It's Honestly, really I would lean keep Quinn Snyder – and let Danny Ainge, you know, and try to build a team around him and just sell off D. Mitch and go bear for what you can get. Right. You know, you know, build around whatever timeline those, you know, your top brass wants to. If you want to go with like a youth movement, try to get young players and picks back with some dead salary. If you want to try to run it back and compete. I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's you tricky. Well, speaking of coaches and Quinn Snyder, because he was rumored, what do you? We haven't spoken about the Darvin Ham hiring, have we? I don't know. I yeah, I don't think we have. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I don't know. It's it. I, did I just, don't know. <laughs> I did fucking know, man. Um, no, I mean, I heard some good news that like the Lakers were gonna like let him pick some of his own staff, which I guess they hadn't done prior. So it sounds like they're giving him a little bit of autonomy. Just good because it would hot suck. Nami. I mean, hot Nami. Um, it would suck to be like, oh, the guy who's been passed over unfairly for so many years and you finally get a chance. Not only one, you walk – because, like, he is walking into the Lakers either way, which is a, one of the worst coaching situations I feel like anybody could ever ask for. Yeah. But on top of that, to not even be able to pick your own staff, I'm glad they're at least rumored to be giving him that – um, courtesy. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't think he was ever my first choice for their coach, but who knows, man, maybe, maybe sometimes it does take like the, um, you know, former NBA player who can relay a little bit better to, to get the most out of them. So yeah, I mean, he seems, approach, really, but. he seems likable too from everything I hear. So he, well, seems yeah, like he's, a, he seems like a guy that players like, and he's been one of the most, um, I don't know how to say it, but, uh, he's one of those assistant coaches that you just hear his name pop up more than the others. It's like, it's like, it seems like it was a foregone conclusion that he was going to get a head coaching job at some point. So if enough, if enough 
you know, he people in the dues. lead. Yeah, yeah. If enough people are speaking that highly of him, it must mean something. So, right. and I guess he was like kind of the always a bridesmaid, never a bride. He's always like second choice. So, I don't know. I'm I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, not super optimistic because it seems like they might be stuck with AD, LeBron, and Russ and a rookie head coach. So, <laughs> plus it's like I don't. I guess I want to ask a bigger question. Like, what are your thoughts on like? LeBron played against Darvin Hand and was like, this guy's a, you know, not to like speak poorly of like Darvin Hand's NBA career, but it was like, I don't even know if you'd ever call him a role player. He was an end of a bench guy for like a good like chunk of his career. It never seemed like he was a, a major contributor. So I've always wondered how that works. Like if, if you're a G or I don't know, what are your thoughts on coaches like that that aren't super far removed? Like, LeBron was legitimately a contemporary to him. I mean, barely, though. Like, I'm looking at Darvin Ham's player card. He played in LeBron's rookie season and LeBron's sophomore season. So, yeah, I mean, like, I guess, do you draw a line at any point with that? Or, I mean, he played more with Ty Lue, and Ty Lue was a role player. Oh, that's true. And that worked. I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's an interesting concept. It's, it seems like you have no issue with it. Not at all. I mean, I don't think – so what are you saying? You need to be a star in this league to be a good coach or to have no, the respect but, of players? No, but I guess I guess less so the role a uh, former player had in the league, but more so the overlap. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I find that, like, you know, there have been a number of coaches who – have had overlap in the league. Like I'm thinking of play coaches who started off younger. Mm -hmm. um, like I just had one in my head. Who the fuck was it? It was. Uh, I mean, Jay Kidd started like the year. Yeah, after yeah, eight. yeah. Jay and like, yeah, Jay Kidd. I mean, I think that I, I'm not going to speak for. I mean, maybe that's more of a question. If I mean, it maybe it'd be more of a question if like a player was older than the coach. Like some of these situations where you have guys. Yeah, you know, like, I know Borrego didn't play in the league, but like he was really young, or like. Uh, Ryan Saunders, when he was coaching the T Wolves, like he's really young. just age in general, as opposed to. I would, I would, I have no idea. I can't speak for NBA players and their mindsets, but like if I was an NBA, I think I like. I'm just trying to think about this in my job. It's like if somebody had the experience oh. and was there before me, and paid their dues for ten years, and we worked the same position for one, and then they got a promotion and they were my manager, I would not feel any type of way True. about that at all. Very true. No matter if I know like the newer tools and like the stuff that makes me more efficient in, in, the, in that job, I would have more of a problem though, not to say I would, but if I was going to have a problem with one or the other, I would have more of a problem with I'm starting a job and a guy who's never worked at this job and doesn't know any of the things that I do about what it takes to get this job done, got hired and is my manager and is younger than me. I would feel more of a way about that if I had to. That's very true. That's very true. So I think, and I think, again, I'm not going to speak for all NBA players because I think that a lot, you know, the majority of them can do it, can handle it mm -hmm. and are, are, are uh, responsive to coaching. But like, I think that they have, if I had to guess more respect for players who's, who played in the league or played high level basketball and not, well, just, yeah. not just these like dorks like yeah. Sam Hankey or Daryl Morey, like, which, cause you know, you hear a number of players talk kind of negatively about analytics, although they embrace it, mm -hmm. but you know, and I think, and I would, I would expect to, to, for them to feel that way about me. It's like, oh yeah, I played high school basketball and then I went to MIT and now I'm telling you how to play basketball. It's yeah. like, I, even if I'm 70 years old and I've proven that I'm a master at, at creating models and forecasting, but like, I think they would still have more respect for an end of the bench player who played seven years in a league in one year. That's true. As an overlap. That's just my opinion. That was a long winded. Well, no, no, I know. I think you hit the nail on the head with that with that real world example and plus too like just because a guy wasn't necessarily an all-star or this or that it's like even if you make it to the league I feel like there's got to be a certain uh respect level or kinship unless you're Patrick Beverly um you know unless you're an absolute douchebag um but like yeah, I, I guess maybe it's, you know, making mountains out of molehills. It'll, it'll just be interesting to see how this one plays out over time uh, yeah. with the Lakers in there. I don't know. I was. I can't hear you. Sorry, your mic cut out again. Hey, what is the deal with this? Can you hear me okay now? Yeah, I can now. Sorry about that. Um, I was just saying I about worked myself into a shoot today. I was looking back at the 2020 
playoffs in the bubble and what AD was doing. I was like, if they just get that version of AD back, it'll all be – it's like that guy's – It's over, gone. dude. It's yeah. the first time I've ever – it's the first time before a season I've ever felt like LeBron's team doesn't have a chance. Zero it's chance. the first time, yeah. Yeah. I I think they'll make the playoffs, but I'm like – I wouldn't chance. even – I wouldn't bet on that either. But I don't know. I was – if – and again, it's like the stuff we always do with these players, not necessarily with AD, but just generally where it's like you assume like if you want an outcome to happen, you assume like, oh, he's going to come back. He heard everything. We're going to see AD unleashed. It's like even if you got AD, Russ is still going to freaking sandbag the entire team. until So until they true. seem committed to get rid of Russ, I don't believe true. it. He's just or, until Russ, sh- or until Russ shows me that he's committed to changing how he wants to play. Or if he wants to even, you know, play play how you want to play, Russ, but remember how to put the put the bat or the ball within like three feet of the basket. Hit the rim at least so you can at least some of that was... an offensive rebound. Yeah. I'm tired of seeing him go off the fucking backboard, dude. Oh God. Some of those misses were it was like it was like, like watching a like seven year old shoot a yeah, and I mean, I still, I, I still think he's great, and I still think he's a good NBA player who can, like, contribute, but not in this situation. This ain't working. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't be what you were in this situation. Like, I think he could go to a team who needs an alpha, and he could average 25, 12, and win and 11. 32 games. Yeah, and, like, you know, he, could, he could still, like, single-handedly stars. carry the team. Yeah, but, like, if, if that ain't the Lakers doing, it's like, you have to fit in here if you want yeah. to. Like, because you are, whether you like it or not, the third option. And so, well, yeah, and, and not to just rehab. Your mic cut out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna... We're about to watch a meltdown live on air. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. <sighs> Fucking shit. Um, I was just saying... Uh... <laughs> Russ, third option. Well, no, it was it was about like the the lack of self awareness. That's the thing that blew me away over the course of the year. Yeah, you know, just how many times he said, "Oh, I just got to be me. I just got to keep being me." It's like, yeah, and it's like how he doesn't take any criticism. That stuff's starting to rub me the wrong way. Well, yeah, it was like the pity party that came out from. It's like everybody's being too hard on him. It's like, no, you get paid that much. I mean, you're yeah. going to have some expectations, and you're in L.A. That comes with the territory, motherfucker. Yeah, and if you want to carry yourself like the big boss hog, fucking yeah. quit shooting it off the side of the backboard, meaning <laughs> a, a total failure on the court. So, I don't know. Enough still Lakers enough forever. Lakers, yeah, yeah, enough yeah sure. We should get off that. Fuck em. Um, I don't know. I guess that kind of – it's been kind of a quiet news week. I mean, all the focus has been right where it should be on the finals. Sorry we're not uh, covering that a little more in depth. You can already hear the defeat in our voices. It's not the outcome either of us want, so it takes some of the joy out of it. It's, it it's, it's honestly, I think it's the second worst case scenario I could have imagined. Warriors, Nets would have been one. Warriors, Celtics, probably two in terms of like worst, that my most hated finals matchup. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're, I think that's pretty close to the mark, honestly. Yeah. Um, very Spe- excited. Sp- well, very, speaking of, uh, well, dude, I just God, I hope Steph doesn't win a Finals MVP, dude. That'd be. I don't care who wins it, as long as Steph doesn't win a Finals right. MVP, and it can be like, yeah, this motherfucker can get shut down when it, the chips are on the table. Uh, the, yeah. What is your dream outcome of this Finals then? Celtics sweep the Warriors, and Steph averages zero points on. Zero who gets Finals MVP? MVP? Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart. I don't really give a fuck as long as the Warriors lose. That'd be my dream. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't fucking know, man. Um, well, I don't know. Do you want to cover some of the blood in the garden? We did some more reading. Or do you want to? Yeah, yeah. I do have one thing I wanted to. Uh, I found extremely interesting that I don't. I, you may have known. I did not learn this until a couple of days ago, and I was just messing around on Basketball Reference. But do you remember Willie Anderson for the Spurs? Early nineties. No. Okay. Mm-mm. Uh. He was like a player that uh, I would I get a basketball card of him when I was young. Young, I was like, this guy's cool. I really like him. Him and David Benoit were like two that I was thought were really cool for some odd reason okay. for the Jazz. But Willie Anderson is Shandon Anderson's brother. What? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, this is no fucking way. dang. Yeah, dang. But I, and then I don't know if you have Willie Anderson's basketball reference up. No, I just pull, pulled up images. Look at his <laughs> look at his first season in the league. Gangbusters. Yeah, he came in. He was a uh, – let's see what pick he was overall. Tenth overall. 
He right. averaged 19, five and five. That's like some, he was almost a part of like that club that everybody talks about the 25 and five oh my. on 50% shooting. God. Yeah. But I yeah, had no idea that him and, I had no idea that him and Shandon Anderson were brothers. That's crazy. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I literally had no clue. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't do this, but uh, real quick, RIP to Mary and Barber. Um, just wanted yeah. to say that. That was a yeah. sad, I don't know where that's going to go, happened. but seeing it, you know, it brought up a bunch of his highlights on Twitter. Oh, that's my. Back, back when football was awesome. <laughs> uh, how many people have run harder than him, dude? Unreal. RIP. RIP. He was always a, uh, I don't know. I don't know. That was that was a sad one. Sorry to jump into that, no, but no, no, uh, that's important. I don't know why that jogged my memory. Just talking about dudes from the past, I guess. But um, no, shouts out to Willie Anderson, though. That is a heck of a rookie year. I don't even know because that's like Spurs right before David Robinson, right? Yeah, it's like right must have been a pretty sorry one. state of affairs. Because yeah. I feel like I don't know how you are with like the Spurs history, but to me, it's like what there's like the some George Gervin, and then there's a gap. Right. And then it's just Admiral Tim Duncan, Popovich, legacy stuff now. But, like, hmm. Yeah. Probably the same with their history as well. And yeah, addition well, to as well as. Well, sorry to totally hijack the, the no, thing there. Don't be bad. sorry. Um, Dennis Rodman. The Rodman. Um, Chris Whitney was a rookie for the Spurs. Dang. No idea. Dang. Um, I guess when he was a baller. He had the he had the typo on the back though, 203 tops card, right? So he had yeah. like 5,000 points. Shouts yeah, out to the real a, ones that know that. He was a great, he was a great scorer, dude. Yeah, the um, greatest. Which, which this is I always enjoy like when I look at an old player, like I shouldn't say old Chris Whitney played in the 2000s, but um, you look at his player card. He was born in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, went to school in Hopkins, high school in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. It's like now I feel like Oh, with yeah. like the evolution of youth basketball and stuff, it's like it doesn't matter where you're born, you're you're moving for high school basketball. And so I I don't know, I get joy out of watching like just I mean th- you're just seeing like oh they went to like the motherfuckers like James Jones, born in Miami, went to school in Miami, played drafted like yeah. Uh, I just think that's cool when they like stay and go to high school where they were born. Yeah, I feel like that stuff's only gonna be less and less with just how how the game is, how youth basketball is approached. Yeah, I just clicked a random one. Dale Ellis, born in Marietta, Georgia, went to high school in Marietta, Georgia. Yeah, the OGs. Well, yeah, and it's like it sucks too because there used to be this like weird um, territorialism somewhat in basketball. I mean, there definitely was. There was, I think there was legit territorial. Like who makes the best hoopers? Yeah, but like that more so that debate of like, we don't, it sucks. We don't hear anymore about like, oh, the great New York point guards. We don't, you know. And I, that's like the biggest, most obvious example. But like, I guess there's still like basketball culture in, in different places, but it's not. It's less so about the upcoming young players, which kind of sucks. Right. Yeah, and I just clicked, stuff. My third random one in a row. I clicked Antonio McDice. He was he was born in Quitman, Mississippi. Went to high school in Quitman, Mississippi. Ooh wee, ooh wee. Yeah, I wonder if you did that experiment. Was just like clicking on random dudes from like 2017 Here. draft or something. And be like, I'll do. Yeah. Bryant Stith is my next victim. Oh, uh, went born in Emporia, Virginia. Went to school in uh, Lawrenceville, Virginia. I'm not sure how far those are away, but stayed local. It seems like Brian Stith was the man, dude. Dude, he was Love 13th overall. Sure. That's pretty sick. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I want I before we hopped on here, I wanted to mention one thing about Warriors hate. Oh, why? Tell me why. Tell me why. When we grew up. There was this stigma attached to the 90s Yankees. It was like, oh, they just pay for it. They're awful. They're the worst thing in the world, blah, blah, blah. They're just way more stacked than everyone. Why the fuck do people like the Warriors? Like, Otto Porter Jr. was like a um, a third overall pick coming off like a max contract a couple years ago. And granted, like, his career didn't pan out. Injuries, blah, blah, blah. But it's just like they're – Incre- so incredibly stacked. They they have the highest payroll in the history, like second highest payroll in the history of basketball, next to like this year's Clippers. But it's like they pay. It's like why why is there this like why do we like those teams now? Like it used to be, if you were a Yankees, it was like Yankees versus the world. It's like yeah. everybody could agree we hate the Yankees because they're doing this in a 
in like a in a way we don't like or respect. And it's like I get that the Warriors like drafted a lot of their guys and developed a lot of their guys, but it's still just like when they added plus, KD though, it's like yeah, I still feel like there's a lot of people that aren't shitting on them enough for what they are. I mean, but, I agree. It's I think I wonder if it. I don't know this, but just thinking out loud, I wonder if it's just rings culture with like the NBA media that just boils everything down to rings and people associate greatness with rings and people want to like great players. True. And it's like, they're not great unless they have rings. So I got to root for teams that are going to get rings, AKA the true. Warriors. True. Yeah. I don't know if it's true or not, but fuck the rings culture. I mean, I, I that know. was another thought exercise I was going to have was like, I was comparing like Jordan's first three finals. He was absolutely but fucking everybody, dude. Oh, yeah. It was like was, shooting I mean, crazy percentages, averaging 40 in a series. That's like Shaq three peak, like that level of dominance. Yeah, like, but then you look at his second three peak, and it's like, I don't give a fuck that he won the fight. Like, I think that it's like having some rings is important if you're in the GOAT talk. You need to have some mm -hmm. rings. But yeah, if we're going to sit here and say, yeah, you need, to, I think you need to get a couple, you need to get two or three. And, I mean, LeBron would have been an exception after he got one. I was like – I mean, even before that, mm -hmm. I thought he was the greatest basketball player ever. Um, not resume-wise at that point, obviously. Yeah. His resume now, I think, makes him the greatest player ever. But on top of the fact that I think he's actually the best basketball player who's ever mm -hmm. played. But, um, like, I was comparing it. And it was like, you think about the 2015 finals uh, where the Cavs lost to the Warriors. They were missing Kyrie and Kevin Love for five games out of that series. Well, Kevin Love, I think he was gone the whole series. Kyrie got hurt in overtime in game one. Yeah. And the carry job, that's like, it's just a legendary carry job. And we, I think a lot of people would agree that LeBron got fucked by not getting finals MVP mm -hmm. when they gave it to Iguodala. That's more, that's more impressive and important in the history of the game to me. Well, maybe not more important in the history of the game because titles matter, but like, but more impressive. Than like Jordan's, an 98, individual. Jordan's 98 finals. Like, as an individual accolade, why are we giving him? Yeah. Yeah, we talk, we point to Jordan won six titles, and it's like, well, let's talk about the finals, actually. Let's talk about how they played. Let's talk about, let's not talk about the outcome of a team game. I know this is the most extreme example, but it's like, why don't we compare Robert Ory to Michael Jordan? Then if we're talking about rings, 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 mm -hmm. rings, 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 it's no, be, and we don't do that because the performance is important. Performance in the finals mm -hmm. matters. You can't just pick James Jones for all his rings or like some of the Celtics role players. They're sure. great players and they're important game, but like you were talking about the actual performance. So why does when we when we like the Jordan fans will say no, it's we can't compare Robert Ory. It's about the like Jordan. And like I get that there's mm -hmm. levels to this, but like we can't. I we, it just gets thrown in the trash. Well, and it's, like, it's like look at the performances in the losses. Yeah, they don't. And, they, I feel like the Jordan fans only like nuance up to a certain level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know I'm wasting my time trying. I don't even know. I just it's been a while since I got upset about that, but. Let's take a break and come back because I'm hot. Yes, sir. All right. No, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I, I get tired of that. Just the, the way they just turn a blind eye. Like you said, exactly. It's like, and, and like, we're going to look certain way because we're always talking about through the LeBron Jordan prism, but you wouldn't have to go far to find other, you know, examples of like truly incredible performance, like Jimmy Butler against the Lakers in 2020. Yeah. You know, one. one of the most incredible individual performances, but like, you know, it, it's just totally, you know, in the way we evaluate these players after they've retired or even contempt, like, during their playing years it's just like that stuff gets swept under the rug but like you know and like i don't want to be this guy but it's just like <laughs> we're in the most competitive era of basketball ever it's like there's never been this level of parity or this much talent and it's like it like you can't tell me jordan and a way overstacked bulls team beating down like a Ancient Utah Jazz team is more. Yeah, impressive. I actually have it up, dude. Sure, Listen to for the Jordan's career than what Jimmy Butler did in 2020. Like, yeah, what's... or what LeBron did in 2015 against yeah. the first year of the greatest team of all time. Listen to the minutes. The, the okay, so I'm look. I sorted the from the '98 Finals. Um, the you, the Jazz roster based on minutes played. Uh, their the person who played the most minutes was Malone, age 34. Second moment, second most minutes, Byron Russell, 27. Uh, third most minutes, Jeff Hornacek, 34. Fourth most minutes, John Stockton, 35. 
Uh, then you have Shandon Anderson and Howard Isley, who are 24 and 25. But then the seventh and eighth men were Chris Morris and Antoine Carr, 32 and 36. So you're going literally against a team that's falling apart. And Jordan on the series uh, shot 427 from the field, 300 from three. Um, averaged two assists, had had 14 assists and 10 turnovers. Um, and so just basically it was just shooting a bunch. And, yeah. and it's like beating a beat like a jazz team that just was over the hill. I'm not that impressed. I'm more impressed by LeBron's 2015 final than I am about George's 98 final. And so to me, if you're talking about it like that, like that should be a check mark. That should be a check mark in LeBron's column, not Jordan's column. I don't care that LeBron that Jordan won a title and LeBron didn't. In that well, see, and that's the thing is like, you know, th- you might not be right, but the fact that this discussion will never be had, that is the issue. Like the discussion is worth having. It's worth, I think it's worth it to look at things at that level, but it'll never happen. And that's where my problem lies. It's like, there's no critical thinking in this stuff. Not every title is the same. Not every playoff runs the same. And it's like, when are we going to start waiting? uh, uh, Difficulty of competition. And I get that everyone's nostalgic for the nineties, but us just as much as anybody. Yeah. But like, you cannot like tell me like just imagine what these warriors teams would have done to some of those 90s teams i mean are they doubling them up is it 140 to 70 <laughs> like like totally honest like i think that's a maybe that's an extreme outcome but i mean i don't know and maybe that's maybe that's part of the issue it's like there's no sense of comparing because it's the game is so much more advanced today than it was 96 finals jordan averaged 27 5 and 4 on 415 shooting from the field, 316 from three, and had 25 assists to 18 turnovers. Man, he's barely getting a – I mean, he's not even hitting a, a 1.5 assist turnover. That is that's yeah, Jalen so, Brown levels. Yeah, he's looking like – Motherfucker was Jalen Brown. <laughs> yeah, for real. That's what I've been saying all season, dude. DeMar DeRozan is just as fucking good. Hey, um, hey whoa, hey, whoa. Uh, yeah, true. you're right. He's better. DeMar, yeah, um, true. Yeah, you're right. I shouldn't disrespect DeRozan like that. Yeah, how um, dare you, dude? I mean, I am chair picking to a certain extent, though, because Jordan's other four four other finals were just like his Unassailable. first repeat is like mind boggling how well he played. Oh yeah, it's it's I, the the Shaq comparison is about the only one I'd make. The only person I'd put in that, you know, Shaq o, big Shaq O'Neal, Shaquille O'Neal, um, Shaquille. Well, I don't know. I'm always I'm always. You know, when there's not a whole lot going on, you can bank on us bashing MJ and bashing <laughs> yeah. the Warriors. Slow so news day. Let's bring it all. up, baby. Fuck them all. Yeah, Jordan's um, 93 finals average 41, eight and a half, and six. Motherfuck. Uh, Freaking uh, 41 a game in six games. That's crazy. That's bananas. Yeah, that is nuts. I mean, he's in that conversation for a reason. He's a, yeah, I agree. Top ten shooting guards ever. I agree. So he belongs in that. Behind Harden, as long as he's behind Harden, we're no, good. That's one line I'm not going to cross. Fuck true, me. true. I won't. How about uh, you show up in one playoff game in your entire career? I will say, I did see a tweet the other day. It was a compilation of all the headlines when um, I think it was Harden's first season with the Nets. So last year when he was making a charge at the MVP in the second half of the season, that was the – seeing some of those Harden headlines are crazy, dude. It's from, like, reputable, like, what were they guys saying? who cover the NBA. They're saying he's by far the best offensive player we've ever seen. Oh, like, they were saying blas- – even – I'm a Harden mark. They were saying blasphemous stuff about him. And it, it's cra- – I mean, this goes to your point in the never-ending Harden-Kyrie debate, but it's like – how can he be this shit that he was? That, how can he be this bad this year when he was that one year removed, last yeah. year? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a valid question. Um, it's a valid question. But uh, anyways, anyways, we don't need to just rehash stuff we've already talked about. Oh, yeah, about. we do. Let, let's jump into the book. The book. Up in the book. Um, so we left off. Where was it at? Um, did we leave off at the Anthony Mason? Into the, into, into the, into the old Ant Mason chapter. Okay. So, um, I don't know. Chapter 10, it seemed like. I, I didn't really have a whole lot. Oh, wait. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. This was the, this was the chapter. My mistake. 
This is the one where, the, yeah, this is where they go uh, pretty pretty in depth about the '94. Well, yeah, um, I was hoping they would. I was hoping they'd even get against the Pacers. I hope they. I was hoping they'd even get a little bit more. Like, dude, when I read this book, I'm like, I wish this thing was two thousand pages. Oh, because it's same. like we read about these backstories. Was like, I feel like there's so much they could talk about with each game. And yeah, oh, dude, but before we get it, of, sorry, go ahead. I was real quick. That's one of the things. I these books like this. Three Ring Circus, um, the process book. I always forget what that one's called. Why can't they just release a like an a, like a video assist to accompany the book? Because it's like every time I read a chapter, when I'm reading about in-game action, I literally just want to go seek out. I know, dude. Place. I was actually going to ask you: Is like, if you watched the Hubert Davis, the controversial yep. Pippin yep. Did you watch that? Yep. What did you think? I haven't seen it. I, I was I meant to. I didn't get around to it though. Um. So because it's that era of basketball, like it should have been a foul. Well, no, upscaling stuff to like 1080p or 1440p. It's like stuff gets super grainy, so it's hard to really make out. At least in the couple videos that I watched about it, but like, it looked light for a foul even, even now. Really. Like, even with the protection of shooters, I think, if anything, that would have been called an offensive foul in this day and age. Because wow. I think Hubert Davis initiated contact with his left leg on the jump shot. But don't quote me on that again. It was grainy. It was like the fucking Zapruder film. Did um, you watch Did you watch the Derek Harper German suplex? No, I didn't watch I that. I didn't watch that one either. Yeah. I need to watch them both. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. It's just like, I, I don't even know how they would do it. But, like, man, I just wish there was, like, a – a video thing to accompany this because yeah, somebody can make like a video playlist on YouTube and it's like have a footnote like the book of basketball and be like true and just be like hey for this you know source this source this yeah but yeah seriously um but New yeah York I don't know. Is, sorry to sorry to butt in there but that was my no, this book did. made me realize that more than anything ever before it's like I just wish there totally was, baby yeah fucking a oh well Oh, well, maybe in the well, talk, future. Talk about the – if you want to talk about the Pacers, dude, now's your time to shine. Well, I mean, I don't know. I guess prior to that, it was – Freaking wolf. Freaking wolf. There was a couple of funny anecdotes about just how hard it was to get a Knicks ticket. Like John F. Kennedy Jr. got put in the 300 level. He was happy with it? Yeah, and he was like, oh, I got I got the ticket. <laughs> I'm like, in, baby, yeah. Yeah, it was just kind of crazy to hear some of that stuff. Um, you know, ju- I guess if we want to jump ahead to the Pacers stuff, there's like – I don't know. There's some poetic stuff there around like the 85 draft lottery frozen envelope in a, in a weird way. I've always, you know, not to say the Pacers would have won the lottery if there's not a frozen envelope, but like, you always wonder like, Oh, what if Pat Ewing would have gone to the Pacers? Envelope, I mean, down. I think obvious that there was. <laughs> no, um, never. NBA is always putting a fix in on this shit. Um, but no, it was, uh, I don't know. I guess like it's it's the stuff that was like covered in like the thirty for thirty, like the winning time. But it was cool to relive a lot of that stuff. Just you know, Reggie's like yeah. twenty five point fourth quarter. Um, you know, the bad blood with him and Spike Lee. I mean, it's, it's grabbing his it's, crotch. Yeah, it's pretty like well tread. <laughs> Today, um, today they would get fined for that. I think that the NBA office should give a fucking bonus to any player that grabs their crotch in an opposing seriously? arena, dude, after hitting big bonus shots. Dude. Checks. Yeah, for bonus real, dude. Checks, that should be yeah. that should be players should get it written in their contract to get a get a bonus for grabbing their crotch, dude. There's nothing I love that shit, dude. When they hit a big yeah. shot and someone does oh. the ball dance or grabs their crotch. Oh, yeah, the Sam Cassell. Let's dude, talk who's... about crotches, dude. Let's talk about yeah. NBA player crotches. One thing that was sickening, I will say though, reading this was like you know, the stuff they're not going to bring up in a 30 for 30 about the Knicks Pacers rivalry is some of the things that Pacers fans said to Knicks players. Oh, right. In Market Square Arena, there was some heinous shit in there. I'd be willing to bet at that time that that was probably top five most racist uh, arena in the league. Got to be. Got to be, which is yeah. uh, pretty unfortunate. Um, pretty unfortunate. Know. Absolutely unfortunate. Oh, yeah. It's, it's horrible. It's awful. But, you know, you got to. I don't know. It's it's not like a reflection on the Pacers or any of the Pacers right, players. It's right. just an unfortunate circumstance that makes you hate sh- fucking this shithole country. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it sucks that stories like this are all too common even today. Yeah. Um, it's like, oh, we've made all this progress. Psych. Same shit that's been happening for thirty years is still happening. Yep. Same thing that's been happening for hundreds of years is still happening. So, yeah. Yeah. not not to go off on that. Um, 
but I don't know. It was it was a little bit uh, heartbreaking because it still seems like that series was uh, very winnable. Fuck, dude. Game yeah. seven, man. That's crazy to think they could have made the final. Well, and the frustrating part is like what game five was in New York. That's where Reggie goes off, gets them the lead. It's three two going back to Indiana, right? Uh, or yeah. And then I think that's the case. I'm, I might be misremembering that. Yeah, yeah. Game six they, in Indiana. They very clearly had a real chance in game oh, yeah. six and game seven. And it just, oh, never, yeah. just never came to be. And it sucks because, like, I don't know. Reg, Reggie got a trip to the finals, but, you know, he was past his prime. That Pacers core was – it, it would have been cool to see Reggie – Reggie get there and have a chance at it when he was at kind of his apex. That would have been really cool. So yeah, I'll but. be honest with you. I think the Rockets are going to win. Oh think, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean it's. I mean they kind of even alluded to it. Uh, um, Chris Heron kind of alluded to it. It's like the Pacers were they were overachieving this year. Mm-hmm. I forget 100%. the exact quote, but they were um, they were not they were like the lower seed and but two of the well, yeah, two they, matchups that they won. they knocked off like the hot the one seed Hawks who were like yeah. gangbusters. They were like the favorite coming out of the East that year, and the Pacers knocked them off. They like I guess they finished the season strong. They I mean they they sounded like the team who was just hot at the right time, just yeah. uh, ran out of juice. I feel like those stories never ended a title, but I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's just blasphemous. Um, but yeah, I mean. <laughs> I, I could read like I'll, I could reread this chapter and be very happy. Like I could I could rehash these Pacers, Knicks, you know, series and games until the end of time, even if it's the same story over and over and over again. But um, we'll sp- we'll spare anybody at home. Do you want to jump that, into the? Well, that's just dude. I'm looking at the 93, 94 Atlanta Hawks, and that's just crazy that they were the best team in the East with that roster, dude. Well, that's the. Stacey like, Ogman, John Bagley, Mookie Blaylock, Doug Edwards, Craig Elo, Dwayne Farrell, Ricky Grace, Paul Graham, Adam Keefe, John Conkak. No, Andrew Lang, Danny Manning, Enos Watley, Kevin Willis, and Dominique. When Which this there? you want to talk? You want to talk about? He was probably in Denver. You want to talk about a era that's lost in my memory banks? Ninety three, ninety. What the fuck? <laughs> Did I say we're talking about ninety three, ninety four? Right? Yeah. And Neat got traded. Wait, this does this doesn't even make sense. They traded their leading score in the middle of the season and still were first. Why would that's fucked I, up? Is this right in my mind? Let me look. Dominique played 49 games for him. Yeah, it must be correct. Dang. So they were literally their three best players were fucking Mookie Blaylock, Kevin Willis, and Danny Manning. Jeez Louise. And they were the best team in the East, if I'm correct. My that's actually messed up. Wow. Talk about overachieving. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess I guess some of those guys never got the credit that was probably due. You got prime prime Kevin Willis, the Ageless Wonder. Danny Manning, former number one overall pick. There ain't, there ain't, no, way, ain't no way you're going to spin that to me, dog. That's yeah, crazy. That is uh, – just goes to show, dude, 90s is easily the toughest era of basketball ever. <laughs> <laughs> Take your Mookie Blaylock and Kevin Ollie. Get the fuck out of here with it. Kevin Ollie, what the fuck are you talking about? Or what did, what did I say? Kevin Ollie. You said Kevin Ollie. Oh. The fuck? Review the tape, dude. I don't know what the fuck you're talking. You're talking about Kevin Willis, I hope. Did I say Kevin Willis and Kevin Ollie? You said Kevin I Willis was... the first time, then you said oh. Kevin Ollie. Yeah, obviously Kevin Willis. Kevin Ollie was a point guard. Played much <laughs> – well, not much later, but after the fact. My bad. Kevin Ollie yeah. and Kevin Willis were in the league at the same time, shit face. Yeah, but Kevin Ollie came around later is what I'm I know. Say. Yeah. Well, fucking Bitch. tell that to the viewers, dude. They're going to think Kevin Ollie was on the Hawks fucking. No, it was Kevin Willis. I misspoke. Get off of my back. Kevin, Kevin Ollie started in 97, dude. It ain't that long. Yeah, when did Kevin Willis come in the league? Well, fucking 80s, but. Yeah, dude, Kevin Ollie. Dick. Kevin Ollie, uh. Played for a lot of teams. We started in 97. I didn't realize that and played all the way to Yeah, dude, Kevin Willis was 10 years. I know, but Kevin Ollie up. wasn't just – he didn't come around in 04 and just played one yeah, year overlap with Kevin Willis. No, Kevin Ollie was like another ageless one. I feel like he was hanging around like – Played until he was 37. Yeah, yeah. Fuck out of here. Nobody matches Bitch. Kevin Willis, though. 
True. Older, other than like Robert Parrish, maybe. 21 years on the career. Played till he's 44. Yeah. LeBron's about to, dude. Yeah. Uh, dude, Robert Parrish played till 96, 97. That's fucked up. Yeah. Think about that. That is weird. Um, yeah, he was 43. Uh, anyways, we're, we're getting way off in the weeds here. Um, <clears throat> did you want to jump into the into the finals and the John Starks? It's like half finals, half John Starks, Jeff. Sure, yeah. I mean, John Starks representing Tulsa, dude, representing T-Town. Hey, dude, it's crazy. Like, we were both talking about we had our expectations up for the Anthony Mace chapter. The John Starks chapter gave me more in two pages of what I wanted than the Anthony Mason chapter did. It's yeah, just it was talking about John Starks' childhood. How he was like shy. He got married kid. and dropped twenty second in the second half of a college game on the yeah. same day. Yeah, dude, crazy. He, I mean, his his was like the legendary stuff. Like, yeah, quiet, shy kid standing up to racism. Like, um. Went to, like, multiple JUCOs, junior colleges, just never – took him forever to get his footing, and then he's like, oh, he's one of the most impactful players in a in an NBA finals. Right. Cool, cool to hear his story. Um, kind of heartbreaking, though, in the end, because, like, you know, as the chapter goes on, you're like, okay, John Starks is, like, an underdog. I'm rooting for him, especially in sports. We're always taught, like, oh, the underdogs always come out on top. Like, that's what – you know, it's the story everybody wants to hear, and it's like – it just sucks because game one of that finals and game seven, Starks just totally lays, lays an egg, has a couple of the worst games of his career and some of the biggest moments. And he's yeah, just put up a Jason, put up a Jason Tatum. Oh, yeah. The old yeah. three for 18 special. Which, like, it's, it's also, I don't know how you felt about the, the anecdote about like everybody was like thinking, like, when is he going to pull? John Starks in the second half of game seven and play yeah. Rolando Blackman because, like, this is a disaster. Do you like that Pat Riley stuck to his guns even though he said he regretted it later? Um, Yeah, and I just – I was thinking about this as I was reading the chapter, but I feel like obviously, you know, I'm not going to – I'm not faulting uh, Chris Herring for this, but it's like you, you play up some narratives in your book to, like, you know, increase the readability and the storytelling. Mm -hmm. But it's like I was – as I was reading, I was like, was Rolando Blackman that effective at that point? His career was like, they're benching this guy who could literally save the season. And I get – it's like John Starks had so many clutch moments and oh, was yeah. literally – I mean, the way it was painted in this book was almost more valuable at times than Patrick Ewing in the playoffs. He was literally their most dependable player. Well, yeah, he's and not – yeah. And Rolando Blackman was 34 in 93, 94, played 55 games, averaged 17 minutes a game, averaged seven points a game on 430 shooting and 357 from the field. So that's like, if, if, if that's going to be the reason you lost, then, and I mean, Rolando Blackman's a great, he had a great career, but it's like the next year he was out of the league. Yeah. And it's like, it's not like they had some like revelation sitting on the bench. Like who knows? It could have changed everything. I agree. Like everybody's, and they go on to say Pat Riley would write Rolando Blackman and he wouldn't respond mm -hmm. just because how much of a dagger it was to all of them. But uh, well, yeah, I guess like Rolando Blackman was pretty upset about him not I know, getting playing I, time in that second half too, which. And from, and if, if, if I'm Rolando Blackman, I'd feel the same way. And I don't, I don't fault him for feeling that way, but I also don't fault Pat Riley for sticking with his oh, best yeah. player or his second best player. Yeah. It's like, you're not going to bench Jason Tatum for fucking, I don't know, you name it, Peyton Pritchard. It's like, I don't give a shit. There's only, so the way I view these situations, cause it's not, you know, this isn't the first time we've ever heard of a situation like this. The only way you can lose. So, so if you stick to your guns, you can't lose because you stuck to your guns. You stuck to what got you there, and it didn't pan out. Yeah, that you know, you lost. But I feel like it's, I feel like it's different though. If you pull him and the guy comes in and lays an egg, and you still lose, it's like, oh, to me, that's like the worst outcome. I feel like. Well, yeah, and like looking at John Starks, he was a he was an all star one time in his career, and it was that year, ninety three, ninety four. He averaged nineteen a game. That was his highest scoring year of his career. Average six assists. He was their second best player. That'd be like benching Jalen Brown for somebody's playing 10 minutes a game. It's yeah. like, no, I'd rather stick with Jalen Brown. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I get that. I mean, present, cause that's, yeah. Yeah. They presented it. I'm glad they, you know, that Chris Herring shouted or didn't shout out, but like mentioned the Rolando Black. Well, yeah. I want to know about that stuff. Like, the yeah. Fact that yeah. He exactly. Respond to his handwritten letters. Like, I'd love to hear about that. But I think that. I don't think anybody's at fault for feeling the way that they feel. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Um, 
I, I wanted to highlight a couple other anecdotes because one thing that we haven't mentioned because I don't really care about it too much was like, what was it? Game five was the OJ. Oh, that actually I had a question for you about that. Sure. Go ahead. I want you to finish what you were going to say. Well, I was just going to say for anybody not listening at home, game five of the NBA finals was happening. And at the same time, the OJ Simpson uh, uh, car chase was happening, which if you don't know what that is, just do a little bit of research. But basically, just took all the focus off the off the game. So I was wondering if you had any any thoughts on that. or There was a yeah. couple funny anecdotes I saw. Yeah, I have, funny, some, but... I have some thoughts. Uh, so at that point, I don't – I haven't done much research into the OJ stuff. Obviously, I've heard about it because I'm an American. But uh, it, was it correct that he had already been charged and he was bringing himself in? Something like that, yeah. And it's not like they went not – like, I don't know how it played out, but I and I, I think that it wasn't breaking news that he committed a murder that day. Yeah, that wasn't it. The story, right? It was. I don't. I don't believe it, so. No, he, they were. It was like news before that, and then that day the chase happened, and I'm just thinking of, and this is this just shows how warped of a worldview I have. But I would have been like, get this shit. Off. If I'm a Knicks or a Rockets fan, oh, I'd been like, 100%. get this shit off the TV. I would yeah, hear, it's like one. Of, it's like what is it? Game five, right? Two two series in New York. I was mm-hmm. like, you motherfuckers care about like a celebrity driving his car really slow yeah. over your favorite team playing basketball in the finals three, two games away from winning a title. Well, that's... I was like, I, f- I was like, I would have been so fucking like, cause I think about it, dude. Like I was thinking about when I was watching the 2015 finals back in when I was in Norman and sling was still kind of early on. And there was some, there would be issues from time to time. It was like game four, 2015 finals. It lagged for like 10 seconds. I wanted to break everything in the fucking yeah. house. Oh. I was like, fuck this. I need to see this now. Yeah. And yeah. like any inconvenience at all to me, I was I was hot. And that's my problem. Oh, yeah. Ready so to I'm like, punch a wall. I'm like, you're going to cut away to something where it's just a guy driving down the highway going 45 miles an hour for something we already know that he's going to court for and it will inevitably happen. Yeah. I'm like, and I know well, it's probably thing. a much bigger deal to, sorry, I'll, I'll shut up after this. I know it's probably a much bigger thing to people at that time because OJ was a much bigger like, person in like american lexicon and like he was this you know hollywood star and former nfl great and he was like such a lovable person before all this happened but i'm just like i i don't know man well that's like i've always wondered that that's like a weird uh cultural shift because there's the people who anybody anybody born i would say probably what like late 80s later we only know oj as this we only know the chase the he's a psycho how the you know how did he get free oh he went to jail again like now he has a weird twitter account that we all laugh at but it's like this guy obviously killed people just walking free um but like it's it's just we can't we can't go back in time and um put ourselves in those shoes because like it really was like a phenomenon that I I don't understand. I don't even remotely understand. I feel the same well, way about you. Yeah, I'm just trying to think that like it's hard to really put it in this. I know I like trying to comp everything, but it's like I can't think of because I know that he was like beloved. He was like in movies. He had the million dollar smile. He was like an analyst for. I mean, they alluded to as an analyst, like studio analyst. I'm like just trying to think of like uh, Drew Brees. If like Drew Brees, there was rumored that Drew Brees had killed somebody a week ago, and then there was a police chase and he was going 45 down the freeway. I would rather watch game five of the finals than yeah. watch, watch that. Yeah. I, I care. I care that people were hurt. Cause like we could go on a whole thing about gun violence and how strongly I feel about like how sickening it is. But at the end of the day, it's like, this isn't happening really. Like nothing's really happening here. Yeah. It's not like he, this isn't a live situation. He wasn't people... leaving the scene of the crime. Yeah, yeah. With the chase happening, like that's not. What it's this like a privilege. It's like a privileged motherfucker was being told he could come in when he wanted to, and he didn't come in, and then he was mm-hmm. going on a drive. And then he the spazzed. Yeah, yeah. Which, like, it alluded to a suicide note. I'm glad he didn't commit suicide, but, uh, but it's like, yeah. I'm just like, I would get it, and I would be less upset. I wouldn't be upset if it was like a matter of like national importance. Or a matter of like something that was real and actually happening. Yeah, it was just a celebrity doing stupid. Yeah, it's a celebrity not turning himself in. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, and maybe we've been desensitized to that because we live in this like weird social media yeah. era where we're like this stuff's yeah, I bet it was such a not, huge deal then. Yeah, obviously not to to that extent because like that kind of stuff doesn't happen every day, but it's like just I feel like everybody's desensitized to violence, celebrities, crime, all that stuff anymore. So it's like I don't know, maybe it was maybe it was like the last moment like that, or maybe like I don't know. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't place myself there. I can't relate to it at all. It seems stupid to me. It doesn't make sense. I, yeah. I agree. And I'll put a PS on the end of my statement is, is I was two, I was like four years old at that point. And so I don't have the proper frame of reference for how crazy of a moment that was mm-hmm. in American history. Cause every time I ever hear about it, it was like absolutely nuts. And it was yeah. absolutely surreal that it was happening. I'm sure that if I was older and had more respect for what was going on in that moment, that I would feel the same, that it needed to be covered and given its due time. But from my perspective, somebody my age, I'm like, and a basketball fan, if I was a fan of the Knicks or the Rockets, I'd be, yeah. I'd be hot. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I would, I'd be livid. But I mean, that's the beautiful part about this day. It's like, okay, cable wants to shut it off. It's like, I'll just go stream the game somewhere else. Yeah. Like, it's going to be, it's going to be covered somewhere. So you want to play that way, OJ? Fine. Yeah. Yeah, bitch. Um, yeah, I don't know. Speaking of that, though, I did want to say at one point during a timeout, Kenny the Jet Smith ultimate. I don't know how you feel. I hate Kenny. The Jet Apparently, Smith. he was taught. He was talking about the chase during a timeout, and Rudy. Of course, Tom he was Jonovich, in a game five of a finals game. Yeah, Rudy Tom Jonovich was like the coach of the Rockets. Was like uh, he said something. He's like, "We're in the middle of a fucking game. Like, <laughs> cut it out." Timeout breaks. Players go back to the court, and then Rudy. Rudy T yeah. went to like the scores table and was like, but what is going on? <laughs> like, that's just, I don't know. It, it was a funny anecdote. It didn't make me think funny. any less of uh, Rudy T, all time legend. But less so. of Kenny Smith somehow. Because I already don't like Kenny Smith. Yeah, so. yeah. Confirmation bias is real on that one. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I was like, oh, I needed another reason to hate this dude. <laughs> Simple enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. There was a couple other anecdotes. Um, there was one about Bo Kimball just giving John Starks the business in practice. Okay, and, Starks couldn't throw an entry pass. Yeah, and it, it gave some cool insight into, like, um, you know. A lot of these stories revolve around, like, John Starks, Pat Ewing, and Anthony Mason, Pat Riley, yeah. the big players. But to get a little couple of paragraphs about an end-of-the-bench guy, it's yeah. kind of cool to hear, like, oh, Bo Kimball liked to, you know, bust his ass in practice because he's like, this is the only way I'm going to earn playing time. It's like. Yeah. I don't know. You love you love to hear stories like that. Even though, mm-hmm. um, I don't know, man. This this chapter really changed my opinion of John Starks. I mean, I always thought he was like awesome, you know, NBA player. A lot of respect for him. Well, just stuff, go to maybe. page sixty nine, paragraph one, and you can see hey. exactly why John Starks is awesome, dude. Yeah, for all you all you avid readers oh. at home that didn't watch the last step or last yeah last episode. Yeah, yeah. There's a little treat there for you. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess, you know, the, the story ends uh, poorly for the Knicks, obviously. We know how the history played out on that. Was there any other anecdotes or anything you wanted to pull out of the book? No, I was, it was kind of interesting. Like Herb Williams, who I know was a vet at that time, like walking back to the hotel instead of taking the bus because he was so depressed and like mm-hmm. players showering in their jerseys and stuff. And like Starks was in the shower for over an hour because he was so broken up about it. And it's like... I, I don't wish for the players to be tortured when they have a bad game, but it's like hearing about it makes me like them. Like when oh, yeah. Starks had like the bad shooting night. Well, yeah, in, uh, there's the story about him it? not sleeping. Yeah, it's like I don't I wouldn't wish that on people, but the fact that it eats him up so much makes me respect him. 100%. For that. 100%. You wouldn't wish that on anybody, but you respect when people are you know, care that but, much. When they care that yeah, much. Care, yeah. I just want people about to some, care. Yeah, about some we care about that much. Yeah. Oh, which, well, no, we'll save that for another time, but. Uh, uh, I was just going to – I think I sent you that P.J. Tucker, Tyler Hero thing. Yeah, we were talking about P.J. Tucker. I mean, I guess they were eliminated, so I can't be too mad at it. Yeah, I was like, I don't know how to feel. It, 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 it was the duality of man. I was like, if I only see one half the picture, if I only see the Tyler Hero clubbing after losing game seven, I'd be like, this motherfucker, blah, blah, blah. He's the worst kind <laughs> I'm of like, P.J. Tucker, earth. I'm like – but then dude, the he gave side. it his all, man. He's just <laughs> yeah, the guy deserves to relax, dude. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I prefer. I don't know. Not everybody's gonna be like that, but yeah, yeah. No, that was just. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. It's it's tricky in this day. Moral of the story: I'm a bitch, and I don't deserve any respect from any listeners because how I criticize players and people. Same Z's. 
Um, yeah. I don't know. Do you want to hit a couple little trivias real quick? Caller? Let's get it, man. I, I got I got double duty tonight. Woohoo! Let's see here. God, this thing is packed too full, man. Min. All right. What was? No. No, no, you. I've pu- we've pulled this one. Well, then pull it. There's way. hundreds of cards. How the fuck did that happen? Anywho, you don't know how to shuffle. That's how. I don't shuffle. I just put them back in. Dude, John like, Starks' Twitter handle is Starks the Dunk, dude. <laughs> Ooh, we. He's built his brand off dunking on MJ. F yeah. And says I blame him. Right. Who played at Overbrook High School and at the University of Kansas before beginning his pro career? Fucking luck. I uh, just guess people from the University of Kansas. Danny Manning. Uh, Will Will Chamberlain. Chamberneasy. <laughs> Will Chamberneasy. That's what Shaq who, called himself. Oh, right? I know. Who is the Jazz all-time steals leader as of nineteen? Probably Stockton. Ninety-three. Yep. Probably yep. Stockton. Yeah, that motherfucker's <laughs> crazy. Okay, I'm gonna one for two. Right. I'm on fire, baby. All right, uh, getting close. Getting close. Getting close. Okay, there we go. What player was traded with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to the Lakers in 1975? I mean, it's a guy I've never heard. Can you give me options? Yeah. Most deaf, dude. Um, Gary Brokaw, Walt Wesley, Elmore Smith, Alex English. Elmore Smith? Walt Wesley. Well, never never heard of him. You get worse um, week after week. Fuck you. I keep getting <laughs> shit questions, dude. All right. Who has attempted the most career NBA All-Star Game field goals? All right. You should get this one. Right. Oh. In 93, that has to be Kareem. If it's not, I'll kill everyone I know. Okay. Yeah, well, okay. Let's not do that. Well, I'm sorry. I'm tired of losing, dude. <laughs> I ain't answered a question right about four fucking weeks here. Needed that one, dude. Well, do you have any trivia or anything? Um, I was going to ask you what Michael Doliak's career high was earlier, but I just called an audible. I forgot it already. I have to go back to his basketball reference. 16? <laughs> Mike Doliak, <laughs> baby. Shout it was out in the Mikey 20s. D. Oh, was really? in the 20s. I can confirm did, that. Did he have a little bit of an outside shot, or am I just – am I conflating him in uh, – or did neither him or Pat Garrity? Pat Garrity was a smarksman, dude. What are you talking about? Okay. He was, stre- he was like, oh, I feel like I feel like Garrity was an OG stretch four, dude. Went to Notre Dame, didn't he? True, true. Okay, it was not Doliak. Yeah, Doliak attempted or made zero threes in his career. Whatever, you made Wait. one for eight, you lying. Oh, bitch. my bad. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, you're right. One for eight. He Clearly shot five tray balls. Yeah. Clearly a marksman. Um, Pat, do you want to do one more trivia card? Oh, yeah. I'll pull up Pat Garrity's info. Yeah, went to Notre Dame. He was uh, shot 398 on his career on three attempts per game. We. I can't be old school marksman, dude. I like that. Yeah, two attempts, 50%. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, that's what I want to see, dude. Not this poor shit these days. Oh, I guess I'm going first. Sorry, I didn't realize what I was doing. Okay, Uh, how many 20-second timeouts is a team allowed per half? This has definitely changed, I feel like. Two? One. Fucker. Yeah, that can't be... I don't know if that's true. Anymore. I need to know that information. Uh, what jersey number did John Havlicek wear? Wow. Well, we just went over this literally two weeks – last week or two weeks ago. I told you it. Because I was like, I thought that was Havlicek. Or what was – I was like, what was Havlicek? Because I know Kuzi's 14. 17? Yeah, well done. I would have been actually embarrassed with your memory if you would have forgotten. I, I didn't remember it from that. I was looking at John Havlicek today on basketball. <laughs> God, you're a bitch. <laughs> okay. I'm not, it's my turn, motherfucker. Wait, I thought I was doing two. Oh, you're doing. Oh, oh you yeah, two. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Uh, you just did two. Where did Kurt Rambis play before he was with the Los Angeles Leakers? L. Um, Leakers. I Santa Clara, Port, Portland Trailblazers, Greece, or Dallas Mavericks? Greece. Okay, Greece. That, okay, yeah, yeah, I never guessed that. Who was the first player the Hornets acquired by trade? This one's tough. Kelly Trapuca. You fucking kidding me? I'm a Hornets fan, dude. I like I've 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 looked into their team history, dude. We're not worthy. That was a that was a um 
like when you look into like the Pelicans first draft, like that was their first like major thing they did, I think. Dang, dang. That's crazy. You just that's right. Maybe that, that that's still Pelicans team history. I don't give a fuck what Charlotte Hornets fans say, dude. Hey, okay, okay. You're the Bobcats, dude. Fan. No, they're the Bobcats and the Bobcats only. That's my franchise, bitch. This thing is fucked up, man. It's- um, oh, there was one cool thing uh, I found the other day. I was just looking around. Dude, hmm. Glenn Rice's 96-97 was bananas. I feel like I've looked at his basketball reference before. He averaged like, 27 a, average 27 a game and shot 470 from three on five and a half attempts in 96-97. Jesus. So they call him G-Money, dude. They say, fuck Steph Curry. I thought that was Grant yeah. Hill they called G-Money. The real best three point shooter. That's ever. crazy, Ryan's. dude. Four seventy yeah. on, and he played seventy nine games. That's actually that's insane. a real Hornet legend, dude, and not a Bobcat legend. What the fuck, man? His stretch there for the Hornets was awesome. And he got what traded for Eddie Eddie Jones, and it just got or Eddie Jones. Wait, Eddie Jones played ninety eight, ninety nine for the Hornets, I think. Yeah, that was the trade we were three way. It was circus. a three way. Yeah, and then uh, Glenn Rice laid an egg on the Lakers and was never. Never the same. Guy they wanted. Anyway, yeah. yeah, hot stuff, dude. Noise, dang, that'd be a fun. Uh, that'd be fun to go back and watch some of those games. Yeah, Just the best shooter of all time. Nineties Hornets, dude. Got a no little... big deal. No big deal. No biggie. All right. Well, I gotta hop off and do another another thing here. So we'll uh, we'll sign off. That's the luck, week. dude. Yeah, we'll we'll catch y'all fucking next week. Latro. <laughs>